Disclaimer. This video has full spoilers for the Sherlock Holmes The Awakened remake. This video assumes you have either played the game or watched my full review in comparison with the original. If you don't like spoilers, click off the video now. Otherwise, enjoy! In my review of Sherlock Holmes The Awakened, I summarized the remake as more of a Lovecraftian tale than the original. I did not make that assessment lightly. Out of curiosity, I listened to Call of Cthulhu through Audible. I was genuinely surprised at how similar the original story is to Sherlock's adventure. A man, defined by his belief in the logical and rational, discovers a cult. Said cult worships a deity that the protagonist initially sees as a myth. Though, as the story goes on, the revelations the man discovers drive him to insanity. Logic is no longer any comfort because the supernatural haunts him. Pilgrim's Pass, in his video, Why is Sci-Fi So Religious, summarizes Lovecraft's stories and makes a point I partially agree with. In short, the horror in Lovecraftian tales is that of theophobia, or being terrified of God or the existence of a God. This is because, in Lovecraft's opinion, trying to understand God rationally will lead to madness. If you want the full context, I'll leave a link to his video and the chapter where he mentions Lovecraft in the description. Still, the whole video is very illuminating. However, the more I listened to Call of Cthulhu and another story, Dunwich Horror, the more I thought H.P. Lovecraft's fear wasn't necessarily of God, but of more manipulative entities, those who claim to be gods, but do so to destroy or degrade humanity, such as demons. This conflict is also present in the Awakened remake, though with a more balanced mindset than Lovecraft's. This analysis will examine the differences between John Watson and Archibald Rochester, who represent theology and demonology. We'll also see how Sherlock Holmes signifies how these two sides influence him, and, to an extent, affect the everyday man. Before getting too deep into the topic, we have to lay down the definitions of some terms. Some words get thrown around a lot to the point where they lose their original meaning. First, what is a cult? The official definition is a small group dedicating themselves to the devotion of an abstract object, for example the golden calf, or to something considered strange and sinister, in our case, demons. Demonology would fall more within the lines of cults and occultism, the study and worship of demons. Christianity falls more within the lines of theology, or the study of God, and the religious beliefs and theorems dedicated to God. Those differences are, however, just surface level. What is the true contrast between theology and demonology? Before meeting Holmes, Watson was a medic during the war in Afghanistan, leaving the field after an injury puts him out of action. However, one of his war stories ends up with him calling on God to rescue him. My time abroad was difficult. Once, I came across an Afghan, bleeding, who I could not save. He pressed a rosary into my hand. A gift, he said, so as to gain God's favor after that. Dr. Watson? Yes, well, I shan't get into details, but sometime later I found myself lost in the desert. The hydration set in, and things grew ever more dire. The man's words came to me. I said a prayer and placed the rosary on a rock. A gift to gain God's favor. And you were rescued? Yes. A detachment of British soldiers found me. Watson's newfound faith saves him, not necessarily acting as a beacon for the soldiers to find, but giving him the strength to keep going. This is what prayer does on a psychological level. It gives you strength, confidence, and sometimes a brain rewiring. Theology itself is not a danger, far from it. It is a remedy for those willing to accept its gifts. It's why the angle of Lovecraft being theophobic does not sit entirely right with me. I agree that Lovecraft may have associated religion with occultism, especially if you look at Pilgrim's various examples, though this is the wrong way to look at religions such as Christianity, Judaism, Taoism or Buddhism. When rightly understood, these religions promote wellness of the mind, body, and soul. Rochester is not well in either aspect. 
Becoming immersed in Cthulhu's embrace, he had unlocked knowledge that ordinary people could not fathom. Not even Holmes. I see moon beasts, night gaunts, a witch doctor in Arkham. I see what the stars themselves are dreaming. I know more than any man has ever known. Rochester's ramblings remind me of the fall of Adam and Eve. Satan the snake tempting a lone and vulnerable Eve to eat the fruit forbidden to her, swayed by the possibilities of power and knowledge to equal gods. Instead, Adam and Eve became the gateways to original sin, ensuring their descendants would be vulnerable to temptation. Similarly, Rochester has been working to be the gateway for Cthulhu, capturing and sacrificing ethnic groups worldwide to complete the dark ritual. Demonology, at least in my opinion, is what Lovecraft subconsciously critiques. Even in Dunwich Horror, the story starts with the small town being as hedonistic as inhumanly possible, a Christian minister calling them out for their heinous actions. Demons are the eldritch terrors that will drive people insane with their advertisements of being above God, when God is all-powerful. Rochester, in a similar vein, is a victim of demonic influences. His devotion to Cthulhu makes him a murderous zealot, blind in both sight and morality, with his mind scrambled by knowledge no man should possess. So, if Watson and Rochester are theology battling demonology, what is Holmes? He's the personification of human interaction with both sides. Going deeper into Cthulhu's broken world, even if fun and bizarre, still destroys Holmes' sanity. He finds his mind shattered by all the illogical things he is seeing, just as the protagonist of Call of Cthulhu loses his sanity when delving into the existence of Cthulhu. For Holmes, it is hard to justify the presence of a supernatural being in his rational mind space. It is knowledge that he cannot fathom. Uh, the world with the stars is so distant. Uh, the sun inverts the earth. It becomes transparent. Sherlock, snap out of it. Nothing is everything. We are so small, inconsequential, a shadow in the dark. And yet, what saves him from becoming like Rochester is Watson. At every turn, Watson brings Holmes back from the brink, keeps him pushing forward, helps him to retain his sanity, or humbles him. Oh, you are undoubtedly mad. And egotistical, irascible, oblivious, infuriating. All right. Self-absorbed, self-righteous, self-congratulatory. Okay. And invariably, correct. So fear not madness, for it seems to me your greatest strength. Something stirs in the dead Sherlock. A danger, a darkness only a madman would dare face. As the Rosary is the medium of God's strength for Watson to live and survive, Watson is the same for Holmes. Watson's companionship gives Holmes comfort in the darkest of times. Holmes's logic and Watson's faith in his friend made me realize another point from Pilgrim's past and with which I wholeheartedly agree. Faith and reason are intertwined. Holmes' reasoning and high intellect partially keep him sane and out of Cthulhu's clutches for most of the game, even when refuting the supernatural. I do not take you for the superstitious type, Doctor. Such things are mere fantasies, tricks of a feeble mind. One imagines a physician would keep a surer footing in reality. Even in the Cthulhu levels, when the world is broken apart and disconnected, and the solutions to escape are seemingly bizarre, Holmes relies on deduction to resist. But logic alone can only get you so far. You, you drug me! Uh, the fumes in the temple, narcotics, a bad reaction. Oh, you're one of my cross agents. This, this, this has the stink of my brother all over it. No, 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 wait. Of course, I'm dreaming in the asylum. Uh, in Black Edelweiss, uh, tied to a chair. You are standing right here, Holmes, as you always do. Watson's compassion, patience, and companionship keeps Holmes from a path of self-destruction. I say, Watson, 
Would you be afraid to sleep in the same home as a lunatic, a man with softening of the brain, an idiot whose mind has lost its grip? Not in the least. Ah. <laughs> That's lucky. Cthulhu and Rochester do not embody faith and reason, but rather opposing concepts, possession and nihilism. As demons possess and mangle human and animal minds, Cthulhu calls his followers to see life as meaningless, that their bodies are nothing more than useless flesh, food for their dark lord's return. Similarly, Cthulhu shows Rochester the visions he shares with Holmes to paint life as cruel and not worth living. Cthulhu wraps his tendrils around Rochester as it were, edging him on a path that takes the lives of innocents to bring him to earth and feed upon everyone there. All living creatures, to demons or eldritch-like beings, are either playthings or food. So, even if Lovecraft never realized it, theology is not what he feared. It is the potential evil of demon-like influence and its past interference in human lives. If this is what Frogwares intended, my hat's off to them. This story is fantastic, and I can't wait to see what they do next. With that, thank you for watching. Like the video if you did, and leave a comment letting me know what you think of my analysis. Do you think I'm right or wrong? Or do you have a take on the game's themes? Also, don't forget to check out Pilgrim's Passes video in the description below. It reveals facts about how science fiction and religion are more entwined than most think. Also, subscribe or follow my channel so you don't miss when I upload new content. The next video will be another Sherlock Holmes game review. Unlike The Awakened, this one will be a more... nostalgic game for me. <laughs>